Hello, everybody. Uh, there's going to be no podcast this week, so I figured I would uh, hop on and uh, just kind of talk about uh, some of the uh, ACFL kind of off-season stuff going into it. Uh, I believe there's going to be a series of cap health going on, uh, put on by uh, Warchild, Prussia, and um, Sedia, maybe? There's three people. Shit, I should have looked at that first. I will look that up while I'm finished my intro. Uh, but... That, so that's going on. So I'm not going to talk too much about you know specific cap health stuff. The plan is, uh, yeah, it's idea. Sorry. The plan is for this video here. I'm going to go over uh, some off-season needs or maybe team direction stuff, and then how I would go about addressing it more in a general sense because we still have a lot of time left for sort of our you know, opinions on prospects to kind of go out. But I think the strengths of the class have been somewhat identified. I'm a big fan of the edge depth kind of in the early and you know second round part too. I think there's some really interest, intriguing prospects kind of throughout the first you know 80 or so picks of the draft um, for teams that are interested in that. The first round interior defensive line talent is incredible. I'm a big fan of a couple of the guys at the very top of the draft um, that can provide pretty big impact right away. Um, and that has not been something that's been very con or consistent throughout the last couple of years. So I think a great opportunity for teams that need interior deep to find help. I'm a big fan of the corner class as well. Running backs are amazing. I mean, tight ends are amazing too. So kind of some weird positions in there to have been so strong, as of late at least. Um, tight end classes have been kind of up and down especially depth-wise, but last year's really good depth-wise. This year, I feel like it's also very good depth-wise, but has more guys pushing that first-round conversation. Um, so that is kind of just a general take on that. So we're going to go through the teams. Um, I don't, I'm don't. i not going to go too much in depth, but just kind of have an idea. The Bears. The Bears are at a crossroads here. Um, they have a very high pick. Uh, I want to say it's the fourth pick, if I remember correctly. Uh, yes, the fourth pick. So you could look at quarterback. Their quarterbacks on roster next year are going to be Bailey Zappi. Purdy's on the Giants, but Zappi is their quarterback right now going into next year. So they're going to have to be in this quarter market. There's a lot of free agents available to them. They could be someone trying to look to re-sign Kirk Cousins, a free agent. Um, they could be, you know, maybe going after a car or something like that. I just, I don't see them being a team in the running for really a playoff spot. Even with Kirk Cousins, they were pretty bad. They were, you know, up and down with Ben, you know, last year or two years ago, whatever you want to call it. So I don't, I don't think, I think it's time to hit the reset button. Um, so I think it's time to get some assets. Uh, and kind of reset this thing. Um, so quarterback is on the mar on the top of the list here. Dan Pierce at running back. They're definitely good there. Wide receiver is going to be uh, a thing to focus on. Um, probably not that four, but certainly something they can consider looking at. Tight end, I think they could use some help. Komet has kind of started to pick it up, but unfortunately now it's time to pay him. So I think that they could be looking at uh, adding one of those top tight ends with the multiple picks they'll have. Um, especially if they trade down, if someone wants to get up there. Colton Miller, I could see him being on the move, but their offensive line is actually pretty solid. I mean, I think that you could definitely invest in tackle. Um, there's some decent tackle prospects kind of around the uh, middle rounds that could really um, pan out for them. So I think taking a swing at a couple of those guys or maybe a little earlier swing on one could definitely do. Interior offensive line has been pretty good, but uh, could use you know some center help and also just some insurance, white hair, getting up there in age. Um, so just to, you know, kind of bolster the depth of this group. Defensive line needs some serious work uh, across the board. Their pass rush has not been there. Alex Highsmith, a free agent, was their best pass rusher on this season. So certainly pass rush across the board. It's a good draft for this. So I could see them, uh, and they're also in great position. Uh, I think with this top four, I think you see the Texans going quarterback. Uh, I think the number one pick is going to be quarterback. You take those two things as quarterbacks, you are looking at Will Anderson or Carter, and that's that's the pick they should do. I think right now, if they can end up with one of those two guys, I think you feel pretty happy because this is kind of a reset year. Um, so I think I like their position in the draft for those needs specifically. Their secondary is good. I think they don't need to do much to their secondary besides potentially continuing to invest in corner. But I think they're ready to go secondary-wise. Uh, they are a entire front seven, except for Roquan Smith, away from a good defensive front. 
Um, so they've got work to do, but they've got work to do across the board. Uh, I like their team where it's at, though. So I'm not, I'm not down on the Bears long term, uh, other than quarterback, which is obviously the big one. I just think they can set themselves up to try to be, you know, May or Caleb Williams next year is kind of uh, where I see them potentially getting that uh, superstar quarterback. Um, they just have missed out on so far. They've gone the veteran route. Uh, into the Bengals, uh, really interesting offseason for them coming up just because, I mean, what do you do? Last year they did such a great job building a team up, but they have cap space, $44 million in cap space right now. I think that they can still continue to make big swings. Um, they're drafting right in the middle at 18. They've got their quarterback. Uh, wide receivers are going to have to think about extending T. Higgins. Um, but that's obviously there. Uh, tight end Kyle Pitts has been amazing for them. The offensive line is definitely going to need some work on the interior offensive line. I think adding a little bit more depth could do that. They are they have gone a ways to do that. Like So it's not been horrendous. Uh, Jonah Williams is probably a question mark. Um, maybe they invest heavily in a tackle in the middle of the first. I think middle of the first is a great range for a tackle of Roger Jones, a Dewan Jones, Paris Johnson, guys that I've seen mocked around that range or guys that I would like in that range at the very least. So uh, even Skaronsky could fall there. And like, Skaronsky, they kind of did a similar thing um, when they you know, caught uh, Radunes. But I like him to be a really good guard at least, but I like him as a tackle. So I think between Jonah Williams and him, there's some flexibility and you can kind of figure it out. So I like their offensive line, just some more work there. Daniel Hunter had a great season for them. Odafa Oway, maybe not quite the breakout they had hoped for. Um, and the interior defensive line with Solomon Thomas has been a beast. But I think he's a free agent now. Um, so I definitely think adding an offensive lineman, adding a defensive lineman early in this class is where the strength is. They got Chad Muma, Kendricks, Logan Wilson, uh, and Van Noy was pretty solid for them too. So they, Van Noy thinks free agent, so that'll be something else to figure out. But I think offensive line and a defensive line early could do it. Um, or just, you know, investing in free agency. There's, you know, they could, they have the money to spend on the top guard or a top center. Um, their secondary could use more depth. I think depth has been an issue in their secondary. So maybe signing a guy and investing a mid round pick in them. But I think that they're pretty well set up to take a best trenches player either side of the ball, at that 18th spot, whether it's a Broderick Jones, Paris Johnson, or whether it's an edge, Nolan Smith, who's fallen a lot, so he might not even be a guy they consider at that range. But um, just you know, one of those guys, or an early interior, you know, Cansey could be there. Ica could be there, too, that they could take uh, for, some, for a swing, because Demon's tackle has paid off in the first round overall. So I think... That is where they go through free agency or the draft. Um, I think they could be very aggressive at wide receiver, too. I think if a big wide receiver trade's available, I think they can do it. Um, their team, they have the cap space and the rookie contract quarterback to take the swing. And I think an, a, a true, like T. Higgins hasn't just gotten the respect yet, but a true top end X Factor wide receiver could do a big thing for them. The Bills, they are also at a crossroads. Um, just because the team hasn't worked, I think they've made some decent moves. Uh, I think they've they've you know it hasn't been enough. They've neglected some stuff for sure um, that has came back to bite them. The offensive line just not quite where they need it to be to be the team they want to be. Um, defensive line especially not there either. So they've got a lot of work to do. I love their linebackers, but Tremaine Edmonds is a free agent, and I I just don't think the wins are pointing to them keeping him. So. Uh, they, I think they can be fine. You know, gets, they have depth, so keep some of that depth there. Mo Lloyd and uh, Milano for a two-linebacker setup that is common most of the time, I think works good. So I like them there. Their secondary, uh, I'd imagine Greedy's almost a free agent at this point. So Greedy's going to have to be re-signed. Uh, they have Hyde and Poyer still there. So I think it's just depth uh, really across the board. Um, but they just had to figure out why their offense wasn't explosive. Uh, but they are going to have a hole at running back. It's a good year to have a hole at running back. Uh, I can see them taking one in the second round and really liking what they get out of that person. But Cream Hunt's gone, and it just hasn't worked out with him here in Buffalo. I just I can't imagine them shelling out big money for him. If he's cheap, I think they bring him back, and it's a good you know bring back. But I just think it hasn't worked out for them here with Kareem Hunt. Uh, wide receiver, I think they need to do more. Gabe Davis didn't quite break out. Juju has been pretty solid, but I just think you would you would like to see more out of this unit. Diami Brown just hasn't lived up to the uh, 
height that they had for him, which is fine. Tight end, Dawson Knox, a free agent, a great year to need a tight end. Problem is you can't fix all of these things in a draft. Um, so they're going to have to be smart. They don't have a ton of resources to throw at this either. Uh, 20 million in cap space, but only 33 players on the roster. So they just, they're going to need to make some, you know, make some moves. Uh, and they're going to have to be some pretty good value moves. I think they can go cheap at tight end in free agency and try to fill it. Um, and, you know, maybe a third round pick in the draft to try to just add some depth. But they're a team that's in an interesting sort of spot um, as far as that goes. Uh, we'll keep rolling. Broncos, it's tough. I don't really know what to do for them. I kind of thought about them before. They've got $117 million in cap space on 36 players on the roster. So by all means, have all of the space in the world to make it happen. Um, they do have Bradbury, I think, is a free agent, and Bradley Chubb is a free agent to keep. Oh, and Rocky Osin. I think all three of these guys are free agents. Maybe Bradbury is not. He might be the one that isn't, but three key, key guys on their defense now have to be restyling. Jeremy Jones, I believe, is also a free agent who has been big for them. So they've got a lot of holes now to fill. Um, and just I, I, it's really tough to say where they should go. Um, I do think running back would be something that if they can find a good trade piece, be a big boost for them. Because I don't think Ricard White or Isaiah Spiller have really worked out for them. I think those are two solid pieces. Uh, but I just think if this was in real life, I think I would be fine with the group that they have. Just these two running a two-back set. Um, just I like that. Um, but I just don't think in the sim that sort of um, backfield setup is going to be viable. Even if they do have a little bit more different styles, I just think that they should try to go for a top guy. Uh, which is what they hope James Robinson would be, but he just didn't play well for them the entire time. So I don't think James Robinson's back. Wide receivers, more depth. KJ Hamler and Doolin played well, but I think you'd want a little more depth. Tight end, I think you're fine rolling with this group. Uh, Bellinger, a nice draft pick. Their offensive line is a mess, so they need to invest in that. I mean, Fisher and Bulaga, a tackle, you're not running back with that. Um, and that's two starters on their team that they need to completely replace. So definitely some heavy investment from in tackles from them uh, maybe a Conklin team with all the money they got you know he's not spectacular but he's gonna play every down he's really solid so I think they could maybe throw a lot of money at him to try to at least shore up one side and then go heavy in the draft with the other they don't have their own pick they do have the last pick of the first round which is not a horrible tackle spot um, based off of general consensus of the draft I think that some of those guys could end up falling into the second or in their case the end of the first to take them so I like their spot there their defensive line needs some work despite the production. Uh, so even if they do bring back up Chubb and, uh, you know, Draymond Jones, I still think they've got a lot of work to do uh, in that regard. So that'll be something that they'll need to address. Linebackers aren't good. Um, corners, I mean, secondary is still amazing. So I think you try to keep that group together if you can. That was the strength of their team. They need to try to run it back as best they can. Uh, but just pass rush, offensive line, running back, and then maybe start considering wide receivers. But I think you just got to hope for Deshaun Watson bounce back in real life, uh, and you can kind of uh, see them take strides um, in that next season. But like I said, all the flexibility in the world to do it. A little bit limited draft capital compared to where they are, but such is life. The Browns, uh, I mean, I think you're going to see what Ritter can do next year. Uh, great year, rookie of the year. So I think you roll with him next year. That's just kind of how it goes. Brett and Nick Chubb's going to still be in town, so there's a big one for him. Michael Thomas, um, is he still on the roster? He's a free agent in real life. No, he's not. People were thinking he was going to be moved. That's what it was. Yeah, he's still under contract, I'm pretty sure. Sorry. I got a, I saw like an article and I didn't read it. And I was just like, you know, as you do. <laughs> um, yeah, he's on a good contract. Yeah. No, they'll have him. So, yeah, Michael Thomas, George Pickens. Uh, I think you feel good about that. Need a wide receiver three. Uh, but this is a good draft for a slot guy because they got two big wide receivers. So they can go small here, and they didn't go small. They're all big guys. But, you know, get a small speed guy here. A safe flowers would be really fun. I don't know if they're going to be in, in that, the range that would feel good for that. But just uh, make some moves there. Uh, they just need to kind of keep their offensive line intact. Uh, they definitely need a center and a right guard. So that is a thing that they definitely need. Um, but unfortunately for them, Conklin, as we just mentioned, free agent, and Betonio, a free agent. So 
on their offensive line, they've got to find two replacements already as is. And it could be down to just Jedrick Wills from that elite offensive line group from a few years ago with the Treader. You know, they cut him and then he retired. And then uh, with losing Teller last year to the Panthers, uh, they they may be in a, uh, a full rebuild of this offensive line. Uh, and not at a convenient time uh, with the rookie quarterback and stuff. Uh, defensive line, they still need to get you know Garrett more help. Uh, they're still going to have Hargrave and Tomlinson next year. So they've invested heavily in that group. Linebacker David Davis was an aw- was awesome this year, but get him some help. Maybe pick up an extra linebacker in free agency. Uh, corners, they need more depth. Uh, Kelvin Joseph, Caleb Farley is going to be okay, I guess. But probably one of the weaker non-Denzel Ward corner rooms in the entire league. Uh, and just depth and safety too. Julian Love, a free agent. Um, and then all they have is Delpit. So certainly leaves a lot to be desired uh, in their secondary. Um, so Browns have a lot of work to do across the board. Um, they are sitting good cap space wise with $53 million left and 64 players. So they're over the player amount too. So they are sitting good from a situation as far as making the improvements needed, but they've just got a lot of them to make. I don't want to see how they can do about that, but a team that is lacking talent to a degree, um, at least depth. So they'll have some work to do. Busy offseason for them. Uh, to the Bucks, I mean, Brady's gone. Uh, I think it points to a rebuild. Uh, so that's, I'm not going to focus too much on what they have and what they're going to do because I just think they're going to try to get under the cap and then guys like Mike Evans may be on the move. There's been some smoke around that. Um, and, you know, guys like Jensen, if he plays again next year, Barrett, Levante David, Fournette's gone, I think. He's free agent or whatever. Uh, but I just think that they could be moving on from anything that's not a core piece, you know, under 25 or whatever. Um Age 26, because a lot of guys are 26. Just uh, just kind of a reset here. Uh, extending Worf is going to be a thing they have to do. Uh, but for the Bucks, I don't think it's as much about needs and whatever. Uh, they're just trying to try to tear it down a little bit, then build up a supporting cast around Willis that is kind of built more for the future, uh, and see if that team can grow together next year. Willis can maybe have a good year uh, and set stuff up. If not, they'll get their first. They have ownership of their first next year. After yeah, yeah, they'll have it after next year, I think. Or is it next year? Can't remember. But if it doesn't work out, you're in a position to try to draft a quarterback. That's, I think, the, the situation you're in. But give Willis a shot. I don't think you're out of anything. You traded up for him. Might as well see what he got. Uh, Cardinals. I don't know, man. You know, I just... I got nothing for you guys. Saquon's going to be back. Ronald Jones going to be back. Kyler's going to be back. Christian Kirk. D-Hop's going to be back. Julio Jones is going to be gone. They'll need to find another wide receiver. Um, well, I mean, he might be back. I don't know. It'll be on the fence there. Tight ends, Fryermuth, and Roy Cox is going to be a fine unit for sure. Offensive line going to need some help, but where do you get that from? Defensive line going to need some help. Uh, they're a team that I just think they need to try to take a dynamic athlete. I think they lack athletes overall, so I think they just need to try to take a dynamic athlete. I really like them going after a Brian Branch if it's there because I'm just not the uh, Jalen Thomas is fine all right never mind Brian don't go Brian Branch put him in the slot would be fun but I think don't go for him because Asante Samuel Byron Murphy is fine they may keep Chris Harris so he'd be fine as the slot guy so maybe not that but just go for um they don't have their first do they some bitch I don't think they do yeah okay never mind so, I don't know what they're going to do. they got crossroads here. I think it's going to be an, another step back here for them. But maybe fix the cap situation a little bit uh, and just try to uh, run it uh, back with that core intact uh, and see what that can do for you. It may just, you know, better by progressing to the mean um, for the Cardinals. Um, but definitely going to be interesting. Chargers, I mean, they just made the Super Bowl. So now it's about what do you need to do as a team to get back there and to dominate they do have 14 million cast states but only 36 players so as far as a depth situation goes they are gonna have to you know do some maneuvering i think they've got plenty of room to do it i'm not really worried about their cap situation at the moment i mean herbert coming back Eckler coming back keenan mike williams coming back uh that obviously they got great production out of marquis goodwin but 
Uh, I think they bring him back. I don't think you bank on him being that Shakir had some nice moments uh, for the Bills going on late. Trey Smith's fun too. I just think maybe adding another one of these guys from this group. I think it's a deep receiver group. Do that. Hunter Henry, I think you can continue to, try to depend on. Tommy Tremble has had, I think, a pretty decent run. So I think you feel good about all of that. I think you feel really good about Abraham Lucas and Ben Powers here uh, on the right side of your line. And you already felt good about Matt Filer and Rashawn Slater on the left side. So I think uh, adding a center prospect here, uh, I think Blythe may, may be a free agent. I'll be just adding a center in adding an interior offensive line in free agency if you can get one, or just drafting a couple of them. Uh, I know Cyrus Torrance could be fun here, although he's kind of more of a true guard. I think Filer, did Filer play center for the Steelers? God, I can't remember. But maybe maybe one of them can get in center. Um, you've got like a Tipman too, or you've got um, that uh, Michael Schmitz from Minnesota. So some of those guys could be guys that they could start looking at um, to be their long-term interior offensive line replacement because the thing about their line is that it's just not very deep right now. Their edge group, keep Bosa and Cam Jordan together, but they definitely, they could be another team looking at a high defensive tackle. Jordan Davis has worked out for them. They just need more depth because every time they got an injury, it just looked worse. Uh, maybe a linebacker because CJ Mosley kind of on a big contract. Maybe they can try to extend him. Uh, corners, I think they could definitely use some depth um, and try to take a bigger swing, actually, because Michael Davis is fine, pretty good. Stingley, pretty much a meh season and won't be a free agent. I don't think you depend on him next year. So I think they can make a big swing for a corner somewhere in this if they can find one. Uh, and then free safety, I think you feel okay about that. Obviously, Derwin James. So I like the team has a setup. I keep pressing circle instead of just staying there. Um, so they're just kind of trying to add depth across the board and just trying to find um, some some impact players. Um, a couple of those positions I mentioned, like you know, an interior defensive line, maybe a linebacker, a corner, or an interior offensive line, along with a wide receiver three. I think that's where you're looking at impact for them. The Chiefs. Um, say the course, right? They haven't won a, won, a, won a playoff game in the ACFL, but I think you, you just, they've talked about trading some of these guys, and I think maybe you could move a Slay, move a Tyron Matthew, um, guys that are aging out and may regress rather quickly. Uh, Chandler Jones, especially if you can get something for him now. Um, Fletcher Cox is going to be a free agent. He's gone, basically. Jason red has gone. So I think they've got some retooling to do. And I think like the Aurora Chiefs, they're going to have to start drafting well. Uh, they just don't have picks right now. So they're going to have some work to do. Running back class, I think they should take one with their top pick. Because I think that that would be a very good value wherever at in the ACFL. So take a running back with your first pick. And I think you could see some pretty good dividends on that right away. Um, the offensive line needs some obvious work, but there's just not much they can do. So it's just kind of one of those things. They're they're just in a weird spot. Uh, they need help on their edge pass rushing group with all those guys aging out. But again, I think they may just need to, to consider doing what the Chiefs in real life did, which is just like, okay, we, we can't sustain what we're at. We need to reset and just try to hit some draft picks. They hit their draft picks so good they want a Super Bowl, but like, they think they need to start considering going down that path. The Colts need to find a quarterback. It's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, the problem with them needing to find a quarterback is they have no cap space to do so. They have to find, they have to draft one, or they have to find one for cheap. And they're not in a great position to draft because of how well they played down the stretch. But I just think Wentz is not worth the money. The roster is ready to go. They need to find a quarterback to do it. I mean, you love obviously Jonathan Taylor. You love Cortland Sutton, Pittman. Uh, and Paris Campbell, that's a good three. Maybe you could work on upgrading over Paris Campbell. More of a true slot guy, you know, shorter. You know, T.Y. Hilton did that for them this year. But, like, finding a – honestly, if they flowers would be really fun here if they had a quarterback already. But we'll see. Um, Dalton Schultz, he'll be fine at tight end. Overpay, but fine. Um, and then just, you know, invest a little more in the depth of the offensive line because, it's you know, it's going to start getting need to be replaced. Uh, they need to get a pass rush. They're the worst pass rush team in the league, and it's just all DeForest Buckner. Um, so they need to invest in this edge group, too. Uh, take a couple of them, even. Uh, Malcolm Rodriguez, if you feel good about that. Darius Leonard, or Sha Shaquille Leonard. And Okarike is going to be a free agent, so Malcolm may kick into the mic. Um, but that's they got to I mean, there's just a lot of work to do for this uh, defense. They've got some very fun pieces. Um, but they just uh, kind of have to fill this thing out. And I'm not sure that they'll be able to. I did circle again. My God. Uh, but 
so that's the Colts are at an interesting point. It's basically just find a quarterback at this point. Uh, find one that you can believe in, that you can say that you can expect to win your games. Um, or at the very least, one that's cheap. <laughs> I mean, that's the other thing. Uh, but this team is kind of just expiring. If you can't find one, maybe it's time to tear it down. The Commanders, it's all about this guy right here, Lance. You're waiting on him in real life to figure it out or we'll play, really. And see if you have anything. But in the meantime, this year, you might as well invest around him, right? Uh, they need a better running back than Gibson. I've not been the biggest Gibson fan. He's been pretty solid. But in this running back class, I think it's worth taking another swing. Um, as he's getting closer to the needing a contract, take another one. You know, what's if it doesn't work out, like, not, I'm not talking the first round. I'm just saying in general. Like, in the third, there's a lot of guys I, I like in this class. So take one and just see what happens. I think you take another receiver. There two in this class. Uh, I think you got Terry. I think maybe one of the full-size guys would be fun. Um, and then one of the slot guys. I mean, they're all slot guys. But like, give, you know, and Jigbo would be fun. And if they can get him in the early second, if he falls that far, which I doubt here, that would be really fun for them. I like that for them a lot. Um, I mean, you know, Josh Downs, too, would be a lot of fun. Uh, they did get a Watson. Oh, yeah, they got Christian Watson. So, yeah, a, a Josh Downs and stuff like that would be really fun for them, I think. So there's that tight end. I think it'd be uh, interesting if they invested again. Trey McBride, I think you just got to expect more out of Logan Thomas solid. So I think you're okay with your tight end group. Maybe like a late round flyer. Cause there's a couple of those guys in this draft that I like as a late round flyer. So maybe take a seventh or sixth round tight end to be that number three. Uh, offensive line needs some serious work though. That's, uh, that's what I keep mocking them early. Uh, it's just offensive line. I, Cause I just hate it. I hate their offensive line. Um, like, I just I don't see what their plan was with a lot of these. I uh, so I just think that they needed to invest, and that's why I had them taking Skronsky at their top pick. Um, if someone wants to trade down with them, do it because there's just not much there for them. But they need to go heavy in the offensive line. Their pass rush is fine. I'm, I'm fine with their pass rush. Uh, Deron Payne gonna be a free agent though, so you gotta figure that out. Uh, linebackers are old, except for Holcomb, so you kind of have to. Uh, Showbert's not old. He just plays old. Uh, but you have to figure out what you're going to do. Tyndall maybe needs to just step up for them. Uh, I like their secondary a little bit. Uh, Boye, Kevin King, and CJ Henderson. Not the worst um, combination of guys, but probably just need more. Um, Javon Holland, Cameron Curl. Can't ask much more from a safety group. Um, so, fuck, I did it again. Uh, but for the commanders, interesting spot. But I don't think you focus on the defense. I just, I don't see, you focus on the defense for them if you think you can win the division. And I just don't think they can with the Eagles and the Cowboys. Who The Cowboys are at an interesting spot here. I think they are a prime regression candidate. They've been a team that I've been high on throughout the entire ACFL. They have uh, $3 million in cap space and 42 roster spots taken up. So they are, you know, nine short of that top 51. So they're going to have some work to do to get there. Uh, but it's just, you know, Dak, Zeke, with Sylvie Bible and Matt and CD. They're going to have to find wide receiver two and wide receiver three because um, Jacoby Myers is expiring. Maybe his free agent market won't be as big and you can bring him back. And then you're just talking about finding a wide receiver three in the draft. Um, I had them taking Zay Flowers in the mock draft I did because I like Zay Flowers with CD Lamb together. And if you bring back Jacoby Myers, these three guys together, I think, complement each other very well. He becomes a good Randall Cobb who had a big season for them. So I like that three man group for the Cowboys. Um, Tanyan, he's a free agent. You got to find a tight end. They invested in this a little bit with Kolar um, in the last draft. I think this would be another good draft. Someone like a Mayer or a Washington or a Kincaid, I like a lot. So that is a group they can invest in. Offensive line, they've done a good job of filling this group out with a lot of guys. Um, I think if a hey, McGlinchey's cheap, you're running back to play guard. I, but Leo Collins has been struggling in real life. I hit that should take him another year at least to fill out. So I think you're just trying to set this group up for success in the future with the picks you make. But I think you're trying to set it up for next year specifically because after that, it's starting to get even tougher to keep the group together. I think you still can next year. Um, take a top interior defense lineman. They're in a good spot for that too. I think if you have Cansey, I think that helps your team out a lot if he gets drafted highly. So... Um, their linebackers are good. Their secondary is amazing. Depth at safety and elite corners. You really can't ask for much more uh, from secondary. So I think interior defensive line or just defensive line in general because it's just DeMarcus Lawrence right now. Um, and then 
uh, maybe start pre-filling in some holes on the offensive line. Um, but I think that they're in a spot that they could um, feel really good about where their team's at. Dolphins, uh, I've been vocal about what I think the Dolphins should do. Um, so I won't repeat everything I said there. But I think you have to look at the two thing as a question mark. Um, but for next year in the sim, he's going to be a good quarterback. The problem is I just don't see the rest of this roster being ready. Najee Harris is fine. The receivers need two of them, three of them. Bateman's fine, so two of them. Because Fuller, Aguilar, and Parker. I think all of them are expiring, and none of them you really care. So I just think Bateman and two others. you got to find something else, though. Um, tight end, they need help with. But K. Dotton was pretty solid, even when he played in the sim. So I think K. Dotton could be a guy they could potentially have as a starter. But in this is a good of a tight end class. They And with the picks they have, trading down, and even potentially, like, if they don't go to replace uh, two with Bryce Young, I think that they could make this a winning team next year. But I just think they're a long ways away from that. Obviously, the uh, Hunt, Dickerson, Vera Tucker group inside is amazing for them. Like that's a really good interior offensive line, but it's just their tackles are abysmal. So they'll have to find something like that. If they're going to compete. Uh, Sealer, they need to get that boost too that he didn't get. Wilkins, the same thing. Uh, they both played better than that in real life. Uh, being a cool free agent, so they need to find pass rusher. Hopefully, repeating at Jermaine Johnson performance for them. It was really big. Bolton, which your home Baker on the inside is awesome. Xavier Howard took a step back. Still him needing to get that Byron Jones healthy or just a, a third corner too. Um, Edwards is free agent. Rowe is a free agent too, I think. Um, so we'll have to see what they do at safety. But I like the Dolphins uh, kind of going forward. Um, but I just think they missed this window uh, with Tua because they just, I mean, they traded back and stuff. And I think that some of the moves that they made just didn't pan out as you would hope. So they're really what, I mean, even if they do take that pick, it's not like they were like, oh, definitely going to be locks to figure it out, right? So that's the thing. The Eagles, with draft picks galore and cap space to burn, have to fucking go for it. They they got Hurts on a rookie contract for two more years, one more year. Next year is the last year. As on the rookie contract before they had to really extend him, so you have to send it. Uh, trade Kenny Pickett for a pick, because you are doing hurts, right? You're not gonna, you know. So trade Kenny Pickett to somebody like the Colts, who are desperate for one. Then use your assets to either draft guys, which they've done a good job of drafting. So I don't, I don't think you're afraid of that. But I think that they're a great Bijan Robinson team. They can move up and get him. Bijan, Bijan Robinson is a great pick for them. Um, they're just a little further back in the first round. I don't think it'll be there for them. So if they move up with all the picks they have, like all the second rounders and shit, like do that. Because um, I don't like Miles Sanders as their lead guy any longer. Um, and bring back Miles Sanders too. Like you've got a fuck ton of picks. Yeah. Go get Josh Jacobs. Josh Jacobs would be a great a great get for them. Josh Jacobs can draft one later too, just because you know you never know. Uh, I like that uh, wide receiver. I like Monra a lot. They need depth. So go sign one and go draft one too. Elijah Moore, it's just going to be tough to trust him given his just huge question marks in real life. I don't know if he's even worth keeping the superstar next year at the overall he's going to be. So uh, that's just the thing they're going to have to replace with. Tight end depth. Goddard's nice, but you need more than just one guy. Uh, you know, I know McKinney, he's fun, but uh, can you, they invested in this offensive line, but it's still abysmal. So you know, Evan Neal struggled in real life. They can keep him at this, so they'll have him good next year, but uh, they need better interior offensive line play uh, to be the kind of team that they need to be. Uh, their edge rush group is fun, but they just, you know, obviously Michael Parsons and stuff, I think between Carl Loftus and Josh Sweat, you're going to have at least an opposite to him, but they need to invest in this defensive line. I have them taking one of the Cansey or Ike or Breezy, I guess, guys in the middle of this because they didn't get a Jordan Davis. They haven't invested in this as heavily, and it was such a strength for this real-life team. But I think that they're close, so in investing in that. Devon Hamlin going to be back next year as potentially a number two. I don't hate that, um, so that's something. TJ Edwards, uh, free agent, like to bring him back. Devin White, an all-pro uh, in the sim, going to be perfect for them in the middle of this defense. And then, obviously, Micah Parsons. They are a team that I would consider switching to a 3-4. Um, I'm not, you know, I don't think Carl Loftus or Sweat or you guys to move in. Um, so you're kind of just rotating around with those guys. That's not great. Um, but I think that a 3-4, when you put Devin White and TJ Edwards in as the linebackers, and then you just try to find some 
interior defensive lineman. You got you got to find a couple at this point, then, right? I mean, either a Fletcher Cox team, bring him back home. You know, you probably can get him from a discount. You do that sort of thing. So maybe they're a Fletcher Cox team that brings him back and that whole thing. Um, and then so he plays one of them. And then you've got Devon Hamlin and you draft an Ica or a Kansi and you sign another one and you you built yourself into a three four because I just I think you got to rush Parsons more. I think that's the biggest weakness of their team is they're not taking as much of an advantage of Parsons and his strengths as I think they could be. Um, so I think you build the defense around him. Devin White is a good fit for a 3-4-2. Da- Dante Jackson, Avante Maddox is a great combination, uh, but they need more. Cool- Actually, Kwon cool Williams. I like Kwon cool Williams a lot. He's underrated in Madden. So I like their secondary um, with Kyle Hamilton. Quandre Diggs and Magnet Hands. So I think that they don't actually have a lot of holes. I think they can make big swings, and that's where I see them being. Uh, just make some big swings, guys, because you're right there. Uh, the Cowboys are bound to take a step back this year, and you also beat them once at full strength. Um, you know, lost them in the playoffs, but it was tight games. So they're right on the cusp. Hurts is going to be even better next year um, once they finally put some respect on his name. So I love them in their spot. The Falcons invested in this group. And it really sucks because they Matt Ryan aging out. I don't know what they're going to do. Uh, but whatever they do, whoever they plug in there is going to be set up for success. I mean, Robbie, I mean, Brandon Cook specifically is going to be great. Isaiah McKenzie has been really fun for the Bills. Keelan Cole has always been a stud for them. Uh, Sky Moore getting some big playing time now. He could be a prime breakout candidate. Um, Robbie Anderson is probably going to be cut because they need cap. So that's the thing. Um, Jimmy Graham had a great year, but Chiggs and Okongwu, sorry, I'm just bad at names, and Cole Turner, guys they drafted last year. I think you can draft another one this year with as deep as classes. Just give yourself as many swings of the bat at tight end um, to find a one at a low volume. But all pros, all of this offensive line, Jake Matthews is going to be back, Linderbaum, Lindstrom, and Penny Sewell. So a question mark here with all pro Quinton Spain at left guard, but I think you're okay with that. One question mark on the offensive line? Perfectly fine with me. Um, edge group. I'm just going to take a step back. Um, but Krager, it's still good. Linval is going to take a step back. Um, Greg Rousseau has had, had a huge breakout year for them. A little coon. Uh, Jerry Hughes. So they need to find another edge rusher, I'd say. But I think you feel pretty good about the team. Obviously, Terrell McDuffie. Great group. Find a slot guy. Well, I mean, Nick Duffy's kind of a slot guy, too. He plays outside and inside. So find another corner in whatever build that you can, and McDuffy adjusts around that. Uh, safeties, they need some help, though. So safeties, corners, maybe a left guard, uh, and then quarterback. I mean, quarterback's a big one, but I just it's kind of going in the opposite order. Um, and you could consider a true running back, too. I don't think Cordell Patterson's really produced for them at the level that he would have if it was kind of more of a traditional running back. So maybe they are investing in that group as well. Um, let's say this may be a needed part two. Anyway, sorry. Kittle, uh, top of here for the Niners. You'll love to see it. But Niners, I think you just, uh, to the course of fields, he's starting to break out. Ride that wave. Find a better running back than Mostert, guys. Like, this, this is the year to do it. Um, so, you know, upgrade over Mostert and Sermon. This group just didn't work out for them. Um, so get a good, a good running back in there. Get some depth at receiver. It's going to be there in this draft. Got to find it. They only have a second round pick, but you got to find it still. Um, Kittle finds some depth behind him. Uh, that's the entire problem with this team is just find some depth. Um, so they got a lot of holes. Um, but they get stars and scrubs. It's kind of their whole thing. So they just need to make the scrubs just a little better. And I think you're talking about a team that can make some real noise. Um, so we'll see how they do with that. Uh, the Giants are in an interesting spot. They, too, need quarterback, um, in my opinion. Uh, just Daniel Jones, I just don't believe in uh, to be the guy that they're going to pay that amount. Running back is a question mark. Uh, I think you invest in it similarly to how you did this year, though. Kind of the third round pick, take another swing at a guy, maybe have a complimentary skill set to James Cook, or just take the best one. It doesn't really matter. Um, but that's what I think that they should do again. Um, just stay cheap at the position. Um, wide receiver, I think that Slayton's a guy to come bring back. Um, I think you're hoping for a Wanda Robinson breakout. Um, but then after that, Invest in it again. Waddle, still awesome. Slayton and Wandale is fun, but I think draft another one. Why not? I think they could use a full-sized wide receiver, uh, Denzel Mims type. <laughs> but 
that's with you. And I think they're just, they're good. They I'm not like I don't need to give the Giants advice. They know what they're doing. But just keep investing around the team. They did a great job building this thing up. They just got to kind of keep building on this thing, uh, and they'll be ready to go for next year. Um, I like their team overall. Pretty solid depth. Now it's just a matter of can you turn that into kind of true quality talent. Um, and I think they're starting to do that. So we'll see how that works out. The Jags are at a crossroads again. Uh, it's just kind of how it is with them lately. Trevor Lawrence, top 10 quarterback in the league. Um, Etienne, Stevenson, future at the running position. They're fine there. Wide receiver, question marks. Chark and Galladay. Guys that have played well for them in Pringle. Played well for them in the sim. It's been no problem in the sim. But in real life, these guys are not producing at nearly this level. And now they are stuck with these guys potentially regressing, except for maybe Chark. And they have to deal with how the team looks when Galladay isn't as good as he is, when Chark isn't as good as he is. What's their counterpunch here? they got to find something to continue to produce at the, this level offensively. Um, so that is a big a big what if for them. Gisecki didn't have a great year in real life. So it's kind of their whole weapon group played so well here, but it's just not it's not panning out. In real life, so they've got to figure out how to, you know, raise that. Their offensive the line's pretty solid. Juwan Taylor, McGarry, uh, I think, you know, obviously a left tackle upgrade is uh, in the cards for them, but we'll see it out. But it's just the team is kind of what it is. I think it's a really solid group. Um, but what's the next step? What 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 gets you over the hump? Um, then for the Jets, same thing. I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm a broken record here, but. The the as the as the Giants it's just like they got a lot of talent, but like what's going to be what takes it over? They're much more of a quarterback uh, weirdness because they have like two guys that had played a bunch, and neither of them are probably their quarterbacks next year. Brees Hall running back, they're more set there. Wide receiver, I mean, I guess they're fine. London's probably going to need to take another leap for them. Uh, Tyquan Thornton is going to take a leap for them. Um, Gallup is going to have to have him bounce back, you know, two years removed from the injury. Maybe that'll be what they need. Corey Davis is likely on the way out of town. Uh, tight end group's fun. Offensive line's got some real potential, but still investing in that group, I think. Defensive line, defensive front is really good, but linebacker is a huge question mark. They just don't have any linebackers um, worth their weight uh, at all. Um, corners are fun, but you can still add that. I mean, like, listen, I like Newsom, DJ Reed. I just think they got to invest in tree one, obviously just invest in greatness. I think a corner is the position they can be in. And I think they should try it. Uh, safeties. I think you don't hate their group, but you can continue to invest in them. A Brian branch could be fun for them. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I see the jets. Just they not perfect, but they're pretty well set up. They just have to kind of push the thing to the finish line. The lions. Um, do you stick with golf? I think it's a question mark. Just because he's been so good in the sim, but like, is he going to ever be treated as the quarterback that's worth this much money? That's kind of a question mark for me. Um, so we'll see what happens there. DeAndre Swift, Kenneth Walker, and Algier, three good running backs uh, for them. So they're going to be fine at running back. Uh, wide receiver, definitely big question marks. Um, they're going to have to find some high-end replacements for that is with Claypool and Dotson is fun, but they just need to get better, like straight up. They need a T. Higgins type. Like I said that that wasn't even enough for the Bengals, but like they need somebody big and like who plays like it, not just Claypool who doesn't. Like they need somebody who like will dominate down the field for them. Uh, if they can get that, I mean, they're dangerous. Hawkinson's still nice. The offensive line's going to be good. Um, just, you know, win a free agent. They're going to figure out what to do there. Um, defensive line needs some work. Uh, Hush said a good year. Jalen Phillips had a good year. Oh, JOK was an all-pro for us, so that's fun. Uh, but just to keep investing on this front, just like they have been. Jason Jackson, prime for regression. Razul Douglas, a stud in the sim. Hopefully they can keep him going. Amani Aruye, too, is there. Jeff Kuda had a great year. So, I mean, I think you have a nice collection of corners. Some depth there. Um, more depth at the safety position, I think, will be uh, on the docket. But yeah, uh, Lions just got to kind of keep plugging away, similar to the Jets and the Giants, uh, for me at least, as far as team building goes. The Packers, Matt Crossroads is the quarterback position. They have two quarterbacks now who would be considered viable or good even, but both of them could be free agents. So what happens with Rodgers? If Rodgers opts out, can they even bring him back? Uh, is Geno Smith 
can they afford the tag? If they can't afford the tag, you know, are they going to work on an extension for him? Is he going to play on the tag? There's a lot of questions around this team's quarterback situation, and that kind of just caused all of it. So I could just not talk about the rest of it and kind of just move on because that's just kind of the big thing. Um, but I do think that the crossroads does permeate the rest of it, right? Um, you kind of have to decide between A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones. I think that they've been putting off that decision, and I think that's been bad for them. Do you just trade A.J. Dillon? Do you just trade Aaron Jones? But whatever you do, I think you have to do it because you're not getting value out of whichever one you're not playing. It's not like in real life. And even in real life, they're not getting shit out of Dillon. So like, I, just, I don't think that they can say that they should run it back with them. They need to find better wide receiver help. I mean, Pierce and Dobbs, they talk about all the time. Tony. But, like, behind Adams, it's just really unproven guys or gadget players. So it's like they need to find a wide receiver, too. Tony is your three. Dobbs and Pierce is your four or five. Is a much better group than what they have currently. I think they've been trying, but they just haven't. And Joku, a good tight end. Uh, their offensive line can be elite again if they choose to keep it that way. I think if Rodgers is gone, they may consider retooling a bit. You know, Elaine Johnson, see if you can get some value for him and stuff like that. So we'll see. Their defensive line is still pretty solid, but could use some more depth, uh, specifically at more true defensive ends in the 3-4. But they could be investing in that again, um, potentially in the draft. Um, some decent mid-round guys they could be going for. Um, but yeah, I mean, William Jackson, free agent, so they're going to have to figure out their secondary a little bit. Amos, free agent. Savage, uh, not a free agent, but just bad. Uh, Daxton Hill, their only real hope for their safety group. So some work to do in Green Bay, but um, they're probably heading to a rebuild, right? I think that, you know after winning it this you know, two years ago and last year just falling short, I think it's time for the rebuild. But we'll see if they you know convince Rodgers to stay and try to run it back as best they can. Because uh, they're still going to be a great team. It's just they're they, they've reached their peak. Uh, now it's just a matter of if their less than peak is enough. Panthers question mark quarterback kind of our typical theme. Uh, you know, if you don't have a great quarterback, you have a question mark quarterback. It's kind of how it is. Uh, but McCaffrey, do you keep him? Um, or do you, uh, you know, trade? Just like they did in real life. I think it may be time to trade, but I don't know if they will. Uh, receiver group's pretty fine. Not, not mad at that. Will Disley had a great year for them. But I think they could uh, potentially draft one of these guys at the top. Off the line, just invest in it more. They're just pretty bad outside of Teller. They had a good year, but pretty bad outside of Teller. Um... Oh, job. I mean, they've invested a ton in this pass rush, so I think maybe just hopefully seeing some of the fruits of that um, would be kind of what they need. Uh, deep tackle, I think they invest again with Kinlaw. Bridge up be that guy. So taking one of those top guys to compliment Derek Brown would be fun. Um, linebacker group's pretty solid, I think, though. Not not too hate it, not too much. Their corners are really solid. J.C. Horn is a stud. Um and then Fionn Bosley could be something. Isaiah Oliver is not the worst in the world, but they could use some more depth. Safety's uh, pretty solid. So that is what we got there. Patriots, I think you got to try to sign Sam Donald back after the year he had. i um, not sure how it'll go, uh, if it's going to be interesting or whatever, but that's, I think, the plan. Uh, running back, I think, is a big need for them. I think they just need to invest in running back. That's why they can't run the ball well. So invest in that. Invest in some wide receiver again. Because I just don't think Jarvis Landry and Marvin Jones are it. Um, Terrace Marshall and Josh Palmer are okay. But they are maybe your three and four, not your two and three. Um, so I think with what I anticipate, Marvin Jones and Jarvis Landry being gone, you got to find something behind Cooper to bridge that gap. Um, could be a fun Zay Flowers team as both of these guys, all of them are over six foot, so they kind of have some room for the, you know, Jarvis Landry to place him to be an actual athlete. Uh, that would be fun, I think. Uh, tight end, they're good. Oh, it's the line, they're more or less good. Defensive line, they're pretty solid, although they could definitely use some investment. Um, and then, obviously, the Reddick replacement, because he is seemingly good as gone. Um, we'll see if the tag or whatever, and they work it out. Uh, Yushi could just step up, and, or tie on to you, I guess. So they have some edges, but interior defensive line help is going to be a thing I think they could invest in. Corners, um, they're all right. Not much more to say. They're all right. McCourty, Duggar. If McCourty comes back, this is a great group. Though they could start thinking of you know life after McCourty uh, a little bit more. Raiders. Jacob's free agent. 
I just they kind of rebuild, right? They're, it looks like they're heading that way. Uh, they tried to surround Carr just like they did in real life with some real receiver talent. I think they're a great place for a receiver to go. I love I love their setup. I think if they do have a quarterback put in here that is the young guy, I try to develop him. I love it. Uh, Rodney Hudson, a free agent. They got to work on their offensive line, but I do think that push comes to shove, I'd be a great place to put a guy like a Levis or a Richardson. So I think that they're in a good spot. Uh, they can move on from Carr, who's on a pretty brutal contract, so they may not be able to. But even with Carr, I don't hate their setup. They just got to find some more offensive line help uh, and then beef up the defense. Finish across the board, outside of Crosby. Uh, they just need more help on defense, so I think that they should just go ahead and do that if they keep Carr. Uh, and bring back Jacobs. Jacobs is a big one. Probably tag him. It's not that, it's not that expensive. Uh, Rams, it's rebuild time. It didn't work out. Staff is going to take a huge step back. Cam Akers, same. Um, so they need, I mean, I'm talking about needs. It's like they need to hope Stafford bounces back in real life in a real way so they can upgrade him. And then beef up their running back room with a good talent somewhere uh, and try to hold on to the receiving talent they have and then just hope that everything kind of holds together. Uh, just, I don't see it. It was... They're good to you, I pay for still. But it's just, they have a lot of holes, and they had to cut guys to get to the cap. I just don't see them filling the holes in any meaningful way. So I just think they're in a tough spot. They are probably had no rebuild. Ravens, uh, actually in a similar spot to the Bengals for me. I just think that they have to um, keep their foot on the gas after a good offseason last year. Um, maybe considering a top first-round first, uh, first round running back. Uh, Odell, they've got some question marks around him, but he should still be good in the same. Olave, Rondell Moore. Some great pickups for them. Kendrick Bourne, a free agent. Um, so that's something. Maybe some backup tight ends. Just they like to go the heavy tight end set. Offensive line's going to be good enough. Dare Saw had a great year. So that tackle group is a tackle duo is amazing. JJ Watt going to need a replacement for him. So potentially that first round into your defensive line that we've been talking about could be in the cards for them. Um, but, you know, otherwise I think they're pretty well set. What more can you say? I mean, they need more depth of the safety room and corner room. Um, but these things aren't expensive to have. So I think it's just being a little more aggressive in those groups. Um, for the Saints, quarterback, and are you rebuilding, right? Are you rebuilding? Do you need a quarterback? It's kind of what I said. Uh, their, their pass rush took a big hit um, because Nwosu kind of fell apart down the stretch on them uh, and lost the, his uh, superstar, which is kind of carrying his uh, value. Gets above 80 overall, superstar. I mean, you're talking about a really good guy. So they need to fix everything, and they need to start fixing it. Uh, it's pretty simple. So um, see Gardner-Johnson, free agent. We'll see what they do to keep him. Kamara could be traded. Um, but, yeah, it, it's not an awful group, but they got some work to do. Charles Cross, left tackle of the future. So that's it. Seahawks, is Russ going to be fine next year? I mean, you have to assume, you have to operate like he's going to be. Straight up. You have to assume he's going to bounce back because you don't have any other options. So I think you draft a good running back or find a really good running back. However, you got to do it. A really good running back for them. Uh, then you're talking about maybe a wide receiver three, an upgrade at tight end. It's a good draft for tight ends. Maybe they could do that. Uh, offensive line, just kind of keep investing in it. Uh, they're kind of in a tough place there. They need to upgrade their pass rush. Um, they need to upgrade their secondary. Uh, actually... Tyler Gordon, Mathis, hmm, St. Just, Marcus Jones. All right, I don't hate it. I'm on board with their secondary. I don't think they have to rebuild that. Um, but they just got a lot of work to do. Steelers, that's me. What's up? Uh, crossroads, what do you do? You got a lot of caps to get under. How does that happen? Um, and what team is left behind? You know, what do you do with Clay Mack? Um, are you as good? The next year, are you are, have you reached your peak? Oh, we talked about this, the uh, Packers reaching their peak. I mean, I feel like it's pretty obvious the Steelers here have reached their peak uh, as far as a team talent perspective will go. So what's the next thing after that, right? I don't know. Do not know. But, you know, talking about draft stuff, uh, defensive line getting old. So, or it was old when we started, so. Could invest in that. Edge rushers, you know, if you, especially if you're moving on from Mac, you're talking about trying to find a replacement to him. Uh, but other than that, I think you feel pretty good about the depth of the team overall. Um, just got to keep it going and 
maybe you run it back next year and see if you know, the lesser team can meet it, just like the Packers, just without Aaron Rodgers. So that's kind of the Steelers. Tough spot. We'll see how that shakes out for me. Uh, Texans, continue the rebuild. Find the quarterback. You're at number two. Pick a quarterback. All Pretty simple. That's all I'm going to say for them. They've got holes everywhere, but find a quarterback first. Do you trade Tunsil? There's another thing. Um, I think you do, probably, because they're so far away. And you trade, you know, Tunsil, you trade Justin Reed, you feature Mitchell and a quarterback, and draft a ton of offense, trade Robert Quinn if he's still under contract, um, and just trade anything that's not, you know, anchored. But yeah, Texans, pretty simple. T- Titans, um, you should be able to win the AFC South every year. They haven't won it yet. So it's like, is it time to move on from Tannehill? I think they're talking about it in real life, too. It's just like, I think you have to, right? This team is just too, simply, is just too good on offense to have played as poorly on offense as they have. Um, they obviously need a wide receiver, too, as well. Swing Shepard, Meek Hardman, not going to cut it. They need more depth, and they need better talent around that. Um, so, find a true wide receiver, too. You know, draft a young guy, too, to play the slot and move Michael Hardman, who's free agent down, or Shepard, who's free agent down. Whichever you got to do, surround him with talent, but also just upgrade quarterback because Tannehill has just not worked out for them. Honestly, I would have a hard time signing him to any team as badly as he's played. He's going to he's gonna get signed. He's going to start somewhere. But it's been so bad here with this good supporting cast, too. Uh, you could say playbook stuff, but like he was horrendous when they moved from the Titans playbook. And they went back to the Titans playbook, and he didn't play like great. And this year they used the Titans playbook most of the time, so it's like it's not been on the playbooks. It's been Tannehill just has not simmed at all well. So that's the thing for them. Vikings, I think they may consider stick with Sam Howell here, just like the in real life team is doing. Um, but they outperformed expectations to the point where – I think that puts them in a really weird spot. I think they made some weird moves, too. Like, Carl Lawson's a free agent in real life. So that's like, is he, what is he going to be? Weatherspoon had a down year. Uh, Kwanu was pretty solid. What do, you, what do you do? What's the next step for this team? Um, I think it's probably a step backwards, realistically. I don't think that they're going to expect to continue to progress. So once they regress a little to the meet next year, Justin Jefferson's going to have a better year. But that's about it. Um, what happens once that happens is the question. Um, honestly, a regression next year is a pretty good thing if they're in the quarterback market. But we'll see how Sam Hill does in year two uh, for this team's kind of outlook. But um, as far as specific things that I would be working on, wide receiver, just adding another one, Pine State Jones. Uh, I, dra- I mocked him a tight end once. I, I like tight end in this class enough that I think they could use the upgrade on it. Uh, another interior defensive lineman could be fun for them. Another edge as well. Because Quipe, after the great rookie year, just kind of kind of felt a little flat this year. Could just be like, you know, sophomore slump. But maybe that they invest in edge one more time. Carl Lawson, you know, not getting any less injury prone over the years. Brian Cook, though, you expect a lot out of. Harrison Smith still good. Their depth is corner is good. So I think overall, they may just be looking at figuring out what happens this year, but just continuing to add talent is kind of the big thing. But yeah, that is all of it. I fit it in just under an hour, talked about all 32 teams, just a little bit of kind of generic stuff. You know, not not a super specific episode here I had going, uh, but I was bored, and I figured let's just uh, talk about some teams, some team needs and stuff. So that is what we got here today. Appreciate you guys for tuning in, and uh, we are uh, going to start kicking off our draft content probably pretty shortly, um, just because, you know, it's getting to that season. We'll be we'll be talking about prospects throughout the entire process here. We're, you know, less than 70 days away from our draft, so that's exciting. We're going to be rolling right up on it. It'll be there before you know it. So, you know, get your big boys ready, folks. It's going to be a good one. But, yeah, I've been Steele. Hopefully, we will have the full ACSU podcast uh, starting back up kind of that first week of March. I'm actually moving, so I'll be moving that first week of March, uh, starting up my new job uh, that first week of March, too. Uh, so that'll be a thing, but hoping for a similar schedule because um, I'm just transferring, so I'm not, like, starting a new company or something. So I'm just transferring. Uh, but, yeah, that's what I got for you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, hopefully, we'll get Johnny back on the podcast starting next week. And, uh, yeah, peace.